Martin, it's Pig for Life, and today's P4 overview we'll be taking an early look at a uh, retail version of Iron Factory's IFEX22. This is part of their War Giant Attackers line, which is their um, Bruticus line. And this is from Iron Factory, obviously. Thank you to them, as well as uh, Madhouse Toys, uh, Toy Dojo, and um, Ages 3 and Up for allowing us, or actually just doing the hookup to allow me to do this early review for everyone. So let's start off with packaging review. So you can see right here, they have a nice box. They have a nice cutout here, smaller cutout than you would probably want, but it kind of just shows the, the robots. You see the robot modes of um, Armor Boar and Bazooka Hound, and that's their names respectively, for their Brawl and Swindle. Up here you get some more images, a little washed out honestly, but I guess maybe that's their style. On the left side here, you can see um, Bazooka Hound and Armor Boar. Sorry if the lighting is not that good here. Kind of sitting a little further up than usual. On the bottom, just some usual uh, warnings and everything like that. Yeah, I actually have like German, is that German? Interesting. <laughs> made in China, and on the back is where we get uh, a lot of the information, so we get to see their alt modes, um, and actually their combined modes on the back here, if you see kind of this, um, I forget what it's called, like, anyway, you, you see it, it's back there, kind of faded in the background, you can see their leg modes, um, and your, the QR code for Iron Factory. All right, so once we get these guys out of packaging, they come in the standard um, Iron Factory kind of plastic clamshells. They do come with a set of instructions, which are kind of important. So very quickly, it goes from the robot modes, which they both come in robot modes, and go into vehicle, but they also show some um, instructions on how to get them from vehicle to the giant's legs. And you can see a cool picture of their war giant here, which I really like. I think it looks really, really cool in terms of um, overall proportions. And, and I like the styling a lot. Uh, and then they also have one quick tip on on armor bore on how to get the leg out. So the leg is a little tricky to get out. I actually don't think the instructions are all that good, um, or at least the tip is all that good for, uh, for that. So I actually have a better method for everyone. So just stay tuned real quick. Let's get these guys out. You can see that they come with, oops, sorry, they come with two sets of feet as well as a number of accessories. So most, both of them come with two guns. Um, their swindle comes with a bazooka and a handgun. I mean, I guess that's where he gets his name from, bazooka hound. Um, I guess handgun hound would not sound as cool as bazooka hound, so that they went with a cooler gun. And then um, armor boar doesn't come with any armor. He comes with two um, kind of submachine gun looking things. So we'll take a look at those all in due time. We'll just spread these out and get these guys kind of up. Uh, really quickly, first, let's get Swindle properly in, in um, robot mode. Let's scooch up a bit, actually. So his robot mode comes in like this, just because he has a fairly large backpack. But you have a double hinge here that will allow you to compact that up a little bit more and so you don't have that front of the car or Jeep or whatever it is, that ATV kind of sitting above his head. You can see here the different weapons that they come with. So I kind of divided and conquered. Uh, I think this is his right foot. So I think this might be Brawl. I mean, it's Swindle. And yeah, this should be Brawl. So yeah. There we go. Let's take a look at these one at a time. Let's start with Swindle and his accessories first. So starting off with Robot Mode Review, you get his foot, which is really for combined mode, obviously. And we'll go into that in a little bit more detail, but it does transform um, seemingly into what people are assuming a kind of third vehicle, or I mean not third, but um, alternate vehicle for a lot of the accessories. A little tough to get in get in here to get this out and then both of these will peg together and seemingly work with maybe the crotch piece or the chest piece to get um, uh, another vehicle of some sort. They kind of showed it off slightly and Wotafa, I don't even know if I'm pronouncing that right, his uh, quick video of or preview of War Giant. This little thing here is actually kind of a backpack or 
what is this? Kind of all it sits on the top of um, his alt mode to mount the weapons. Uh, I guess if you go skiing as well, you can use those for skis. This is his bazooka. Um, it has a couple of handle hidden handles, so one up front, and then another one here. And I thought this was a handle, but it's actually folded out, at least as far as I can tell. And you use it for combining the weapons, and I'll show that off in a bit as well. No molded paint, or no uh, no paint or anything like that. Um, but for a figure this small, that kind of makes sense. Here's this little gun with a little scope there. Now going over the Brawls accessories, he has, like I said, two kind of submachine guns. This fold handle folds up as well. The front handle can swivel to either side, and that allows him to do it in uh, various positions, but hold it in various positions, but also to mount it in his alt mode, his tank mode. And they're both seemingly identical, but they actually are molded, uh, mirrored molded. And again, that's going to be so that they can combine. And his foot is the same deal, it's just the opposite, and his ankle tilt goes the other way. And we'll go into those uh, separately. Moving, moving those off to the side, let's bring in the actual figures themselves. So first off, let's start with their Swindle. And he looks really cool. I like his robot mode a lot. I always like Swindle. He's just, you know, the, the schemey, slimy one. And I always liked his kind of um, tan khaki and purple deco. I always thought that was a really cool color combination. And he has a nice little smirk. Don't know if you're going to be able to see it. Uh, let me do some digital zoom. It's not the best, but here, there you go. You see some of that. Um, he does have some nice painted details here on the front. Like I said, he does have a fairly big backpack, but he does have a lot of nice painted details, like in the front here, the grill, the windshield, and so forth. He has some molded side view mirrors, which we'll see in a bit. But overall, I think he looks really nice for Sundol. For uh, trans... Oh, let's actually go into articulation. So his head is on a ball joint, seemingly. Um, it might just be on a swivel. I thought it was on a ball joint, too, but it's kind of hard to tell, honestly. It might just be a swivel. If it is a ball joint, it's very limited motion. Um, but it's also, as you can see, on a hinge there that can... Rock them up and back. The actual neck joint itself it doesn't have a lot of motion or articulation. He has two shoulder joints. He has one up here and then a ball joint in the shoulder itself. So you can get pretty wide range. And you're going to need that joint here to get down into alt mode. But he can rotate all the way around. He has a ball jointed elbow joint there, but he also has an upper elbow joint it's kind of hard to make use out of just because the molded area of his forearms but yeah if you bend it to the side you can actually get 90 degrees out of that in and of itself in addition to this but you can't really use them both in conjunction no um no hand uh, articulation it's just one molded piece but he does have a wrist swivel which is nice he does have 360 waist no ab crunch or anything like that ball jointed hips, so his legs can go out that far, go back that far, about close to 90, 80 degrees all the way around. He gets a really nice deep knee bend, single joint knee bend, and then he has um, ankle tilts that go really far in. No, it doesn't go out at all, but he does also get some forward and back motion there, as well as a secondary joint here, which you can use for really extreme poses, but is really for transformation. <clears throat> Here we go. Let's get into Brawl very quickly. And you can see just the size differential between these two. Brawl is like huge. He's really, really big. And I don't know the actual skill. I haven't checked the skill chart in a while for, for these guys. But um, I think that kind of makes sense. He's a tank. So he should be considerably, considerably bigger. Brawl actually looks quite nice. His face sculpt is also... Really well detailed. His head seemingly is on a ball joint. It moves like that, but it's really tight on there. Um, and it makes it difficult to do the transformations as the instructions say. The instructions say to turn the head around once you get to part of it, um, but it's actually really hard to do that. So it's not a big deal. You don't really need to. 
as far as his backpack goes, um, is actually removable. And because it's on like a double post that swings around, you can actually have it positioned higher or lower. And you can see that the backpack here, I think formally is supposed to be like this. But if you want a longer one, you can fold it out like that and swivel this around. Something like here, this down like that. You can get a much larger cannon if that's what you're trying to compensate with. Either way, I think it looks quite good. Don't do it like this. If it looks like this, that means you didn't swivel this uh, inner peg around correctly. Should be well hidden. Anyway, that's getting into way too much detail. He also has two sets of shoulder joints. He has one on the inner inner part of his body. And then he, I think he does at least. I thought he did. Maybe not. Huh. This one, he, yeah, he, he does, he does. Okay, I, I was I was thought I was dreaming for a bit, but it's very small, ball joint in, in the shoulders. He does have a bicep swivel, and he doesn't have a ball joint here, he actually has a, a hinge for an elbow. Again, one molded hand, but he does have wrist swivel going on. 360 waist articulation. No ab crunch or anything like that. He does have ball jointed hips. Thigh swivel, which again I failed to mention, swivel has uh, uh, swindle has as well. Swindle has a swivel. I always I always forget the thigh swivel. I have no idea why. Maybe because I'm just an idiot. But he also has a um, really deep knee bend. I think it's two joints technically because this bottom one here that is used for transformation. His foot is on a ball peg at the very base, but also a swivel back here. So you can get a pretty good range of motion, and then he has a separate heel. Oh, I guess I can mention that here as well. If you need extra stability, you can flip this out, but you really shouldn't need it. He has pretty big heels. The only bad thing about him on the back is that his um, lower leg is pretty exposed. Nothing really to do about that. He does have a little decent amount of kibble on the lower part of his leg as well. All right, before we get into... Um, oh, actually, let's show off their accessories. So gun, peg in here. I can flip out this little handle. And I like I like this a lot because then you can use the shoulder articulation to get a really big bazooka pose on this guy. And they're really dynamic. They have a lot of posability for such small figures. With the amount of ankle tilt that would uh, keep Vangelis happy. Here he is with his dual wielding submachine guns. And there's also various part ports around here that you could use if you wanted, if you want to mount it on the outside of his arm or something like that. But really, those are for all mode. Very quickly, some comparisons. Uh, I don't have a ton of Iron Factory figures. I do have their six shot. And you can see six shot is kind of like brawl size and their swindle is closer to their drift or um what's his name deadshot or was not deadshot that's the, that's the marvel guy whatever you guys know what i'm talking about the pre-autobot drift the decepticon drift here's with an official legend scale figure and this is their the hasbro i want to say combiner wars thundercracker so very very good scale overall. I think he's a little too big. Again, he shouldn't be. I mean, six shot is really huge. I don't think Brawl should be that tall, but you know, whatever. So let's get into transformation. Take these weapons off for now. Let's put them off to the side. You you sit back here. Out of focus. So the first thing I like to do with um Bazooka Hound is actually deal with the lower legs first. So the first thing I'll do is you need to flip the toes around 180 degrees. And then use that extra hinge up here to come back and sit on what will be the rear, rear top of the rear of the vehicle. Then go ahead and collapse in the legs. And then fold both halves together. 
should peg in very securely like so. Next up, um, let's go ahead and bring the head in. So flip this down on this hinge here, flip the head back. This will just close up like that. Next up, we'll deal with the arms. The arms are kind of weird. You need to have them bent backwards. So not the regular elbow joint, but actually backwards. And because of the molding, you kind of want to get it to an angle like this. Flip it like so. Um, and get it back around. Come on. Come on, what's going on? Oh, I think I, I think the way I did it was this way. Flip this around this way. There we go, like that. Keep this down for now. Same thing on the other side. Go ahead and fold this down like this. And then flip it around this way. You can see these make kind of an eye piece, eye shape piece. Get these down as low as possible on those shoulder joints. And they tab into the side here. Kind of into this hip area. Come on, there we go. From here, go ahead and bring the front of the vehicle down. There's two tabs that go into his shoulders. From here, we can bring out those heel pieces. And I save this for later just because um, they, they're kind of finicky in the sense that you have to get them aligned um, before you can close up the roof. So go ahead and close up, oh, not the roof, the um, side mirrors or side windows. So you want to get them kind of straightened out, make sure they're straight. And then you'll see they slot in there. And then there's small tiny tabs here and here on either side of the windshield that will tab in. There you go. Bring in this piece that I was talking about before. That pegs into the two holes there. And that allows you to go ahead and mount these. So um, it says to go ahead and flip this out. You can mount, mount this one here, but it makes it kind of crooked unless you barely have it pegged in. I think it actually looks better if you fold this up and peg it in using the back port. And then this one you just peg in as expected. There we go. The wheels do move. Nice little grill here. A cow catcher, what is that what they call it? Painted windows, they look like they're metallic sky blue. No other real articulation, a little bit of openness back here, but not bad, but it does have a decent amount of paint apps, especially again for such a small figure. All right, I think that's it for Swindle or uh, Bazooka Hound, let's get rid of Armor Boar's weapons. So you can do the transformation without removing the backpack. I think it's actually easier, but we're going to try to do it without it, um, just so you can we can prove that you can do that. I like to deal with the legs first. You're going to ro rotate 180 degrees at the waist, and it kind of has a Combiner Wars-esque mechanic where the leg kind of folds in on itself. You want to push down on the knee until everything is kind of flush here. And the tolerances are really tight like most of the Iron Factory figures. I think a little too tight but I guess it's better to be a little bit too tight than a little too loose. With the feet here just fold up the heels then rotate them down and flip them around on their ball joint. And they're going to sit up right on top of the knees, or thighs, I suppose. There we go. Dealing with the upper body, let's go ahead and do with the arms first. Um, I think you have to go like this. Then the shoulders. These pieces here, both the treads and this little back piece here. We'll rotate around to the front. And you'll see that the elbow will tab in kind of right here with these little tabby things. Like that. Like 
Then you want to flip these around to make the top of the front of the tank. And then here's um, where the clearance can be a bit of an issue. I found that. Uh, go, sorry. Didn't get these securely in. There we go. Um, I found that this is a little tough. So the head barely clears through here. You want to lift up on the chest joint. And it opens up and you get the head down. And then these tabs will come closed here. And this is go ahead and rotate the head. But unless you have legend scale <laughs> fingers, it's really hard because it's super tight. I can barely even move the head. Um, let alone get it to rotate around. And again, it's on the bottom, so it's not really a big deal, I don't think. Sorry, this piece keeps coming undone. It's really not this finicky. I don't know if I'm doing something wrong, but this should peg in just fine. Had it had no issues before. There we go. And then they also added these little flat pieces that will come in and peg in here, which is nice because it completes the, the entirety of the tread, which I don't think anybody would really have complained about, but it's nice that they did that. Lastly, you want to flip up the cannon and then rotate it all the way at the base joint. So again, I'm, I'm removing this just to show you. You want to have this position like this so it sits further back. And there we go. There we have Brawl in his tank mode. Less seawall paint applications in his um, alt mode, but still very, very nice. Basically, the army green does have articulation here like that. And then again, depending on how you want this positioned, you can have this rotated this way or this other way. Um, again, both here and here. So you get a lot of different range that you can do. For the guns, uh, the instructions say go ahead and kind of flip these in like this or in like this. And you can mount them here. But you can obviously mount them back here with the other pegs or here, um, up top here with this one or even up top with this one. Really you have a lot of different options. It really depends on what you want to do. If you want to do look kind of like a turret style, that's fine. If you want to have it as a side mounted gun, that's fine as well. But still quite nice looking. All right, lastly, we're gonna go ahead and get into the um, combined modes. So it's very easy to bring out these feet. To get them prepared, you just need to flip this up and that's it. With Swindle, you're just gonna pull up just on the hood piece, not the entire front like we did for Transformation. And there's a joint in here, which is super tight and ratcheted that you're gonna bring out here and it's gonna slide in from, from, from the front um, to lock in when, whenever we get the rest of the figure. Down here you have two pegs that go into this joint and then this back peg will go into his crotch, which is not gonna feel very good for him, but he'll have to tough it out. There's his leg. You can see that he, he does have an ankle tilt. It goes kind of crazy. He doesn't have any forward or back, which is um, kind of a bummer, but he does have he does have a toe articulation that goes forward and can also tilt. For armor bore, what you're going to want to do is you need to get this at least out of this position, and you're going to need this for the combined weapon anyway. What you want to do is, um, so you want to rotate at the base joint that goes in here, and then flip this up like that. So you want it in this kind of position. So it sits kind of higher up. Same thing with his foot. Um, his joint is a little bit different. They don't even tell you to rotate it out, but you can rotate it out here. The reason why they don't is because you're going to need to peg it in first and then rotate it forward because once you rotate it forward, you're going to actually block the slot where everything needs to go in. So that's why they don't tell you to do that. 
peg it in to the bottom here. This one's going to go in Armor Boar's rear, which also can't feel very good. And you can see he still he has the opposite tilt, and he still has the posability with the foot and to, uh, with the toes. And that's it. That's two pieces of your armor bore uh, of your war giant. Um, very quickly, you can combine the weapons. Uh, you can't do a lot of combinations with this just yet, but from what I can tell from the images, you plug this gun into the bottom here. Flip out this piece again that I wasn't sure what to do with, and you're going to want to use this tab to the front of this gun here. Same thing on this side here, just opposite. And you want to make sure that you have a position like this so that these tabs will lock into some other guns that come at a later date with some of the other figures. But you can see it's going to be quite long. All right, so let's go ahead and get these guys transformed back very quickly. We're just going to go directly back into. Well, I guess we can we can bypass we can go into alt mode just because it's super quick. Fold this down, pull this out, fold this down, get these off to the side. Uh, brawl is much easier. All you have to do is flip the turret all the way around. And flip this back, and we're back in his alt mode. Well, I guess he's easier because he. Oh, well, you have to flip this down first, which is a little tough. Again, it is ratcheted, which is good, even for such a small figure. But then you have them both in alt mode. Finally, for transformation back into robot, we're going to go ahead and take this off a of swindle, pull these on the sides down first, flip these pieces up. Just going to flip down the chest, uh, not the chest, the hood front of the car is going to come up back like this. Untab the arms from the hips, bring them up like so. Get the arms, ow, shoot that hurt, down and around like that. There's things I do for third-party transformer reviews. Open this up, get the head down like that, the legs down, split them in half, bring these down on these hinges, flip the toes. Like that. All right, and make sure that this is all flipped down. Uh, I saved doing that until a little bit later just because um, it can get in the way of unfolding the legs. And again, can't really do anything with this as far as I can tell, but go ahead and flip the weapon down. Like so. Then we have Swindle or Bazooka Hound. And here we go like this. I'm gonna go ahead and pull these down, untab this. Here. Oh, sorry, I forgot. I'm gonna pull these untabs down too. Come on. go kind of loosen all that up bring the head through the hole while bringing the chest down now we'll tab into place get the arms down like so and then flip the shoulder pieces back around depending on how you want this transformed I guess you could flip this closed but I don't know if that's a better look than this. Either way, he does have some shoulder kibble. But officially, he's supposed to have him out like that. Flip the cannon up like this. Oh, no, I had it right the other way. Well, let's flip it up just to get it out of the way of the legs. So here's the tricky part. Um, 
they talk about here get the feet down so you can see they talk about how difficult it is to get the thighs or this whole section back out and it definitely is because of the way the knees are molded you can't just like pull it forward um, and they have some instructions they say to go ahead and push on the upper part of the thigh and get it to peek out um, this should come out just a little bit like that I don't you probably can't even see that that's how little of a difference it makes you can see how that black piece just comes down at a slight angle um, and then they say pull it out uh, I've had no luck doing it that way so the best way that I can just tell you to do it is to get the legs in this position like this here I'll just leave one down like this and then push up on here if you push up on this piece you can see that comes out much further than when I was pushing down here I mean you, I guess you can do a combination but you can get more leverage by pushing up on this piece here and that will give you just enough clearance to pull up the leg like so the other thing that's difficult which I haven't found a really good answer to aside from getting a little spudger tool which hopefully I have so um, it's really hard because there's no tabs here and you can't get very good leverage so I go I just go ahead and push out from underneath here and that gets these feedums out but yeah I really would have appreciated a little bit of tabbing uh, especially given the tight tolerances. So again, showing off this piece, you want to have it kind of in the sitting position or backward sitting position technically, and then you want to push on this piece down here. Like that, and you'll see this piece kind of rock out. See? And then you pull it up and out. And with that, you have armor bore back in robot mode with his two machine guns make sure he's holding it the right way so he's not shooting himself and there you have it so final thoughts um i like this group a lot when i first saw iron giant at i think what was it was it tfcon um somewhere i saw first saw them in person i was like that looks ridiculously good so i'm really excited about this group um oh did i not flip these down sorry flip these down like that um i think they look ridiculously good the scale i think could be a little bit, bit better um but overall i like both of these guys uh i think he's a little bit weaker than brawl but brawl's transformation is also a little bit more uh, finicky than than swindles so it's it's give or take um, both of them have great amount of articulation and from what we see in the pictures of War Giant, he does as well, which is great for such a uh, cool figure that combines. And I think they're going to be about 24 centimeters once, once um, he's all combined up. The only other thing I wanted to comment on was um, price because these guys um, are coming in at $70 for this set, $70 for the second set. And then seventy dollars for Onslaught and his accessories. Like I'm guessing most of the combiner stuff. Um, that means this set for all five is two hundred ten dollars before shipping, or if you can combine shipping, get free shipping, whatever, around that mark, right? Um, that's kind of a lot. <laughs> I gotta admit that I didn't realize um, that that's how much this set was going for. And you're asking, so you know, two hundred dollars. Just say two hundred dollars, right? Divided by five figures, that's forty dollars a figure. Uh, I guess when you think about it that way, it's not terrible, um, but it just seems like uh, quite a bit for for the set. I mean, just because the onslaught is is so much seventy dollars in and of, of itself. That said, um, I guess it's a, a pretty good trade off if you, especially if you like the scale, right? Because you could buy two hundred dollars for a masterpiece larger scale figure like a Dinobot or something like that or I guess a Skyfire or you could have five smaller ones that are fun in and of itself but also combine into a bigger one so I mean the price definitely is kind of a sticker shock for me but I think it's going to be up to you whether you think that's worth it for this set for me who I don't I don't collect a lot of legends it's probably going to be too pricey um, but for the rest of you it's really going to be up to your collection 
If you have any questions or comments, go ahead and leave them in the comment section below. As always, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up, share, and subscribe. Um, and as always, if you want to pick this up, go ahead and visit my sponsor, Toy Dojo. Or if you're in Canada, uh, ages three and up on the Vancouver side or um, on the Toronto side, Madhouse Toys. And lastly, again, thanks to Iron Factory for having uh, having the generosity to let me go ahead and review these guys early. All right? That's all for today, everyone. Hope you have a good one.